All right, good morning, true believers. This is the Freedom to Draw Unsolved Mysteries. I'm your host, John Krupa. Today's case is from Ephrata, Pennsylvania, a small town near Amish country, near Lancaster, Pennsylvania, Lancaster County. This is a missing girl. She was 15 years old, guys. This is the case of Ariana M. Bejarano. Bejarano. Ariana M. Bejarano. She was Hispanic. This is what she looked like, guys. We're going to draw her more and tell you her story at the same time on today's case. The freedom to draw unsolved mysteries. Join me, John Krupa, as we delve into this case. What happened to this girl? All right, we're going to draw her, guys. Her name is Ariana M. Bejarano. I think I'm pronouncing that right. I might not be. My apologies if I'm not. And this is what she looked like in real life. And this was around 1988. And here's our drawing of her. And this case has not received much attention at all. She has been missing since November 28th, 1988. She is missing from Ephrata, Pennsylvania, which is out in Amish country where they have horse and buggies. There are some parts of Pennsylvania where horse and buggies still exist, and I'm sure they existed back in 1988 when this girl was walking around. The classification as of now is that she's endangered missing. She was born in 73, so she's only a few years older than me. I was born in 78. She was 5'3 and 125 pounds. Distinguishing characteristics are she was a Hispanic female. She had black hair, she had brown eyes. Adriana had metal braces on her teeth at the time of her 1988 disappearance. When I was drawing it, I really couldn't see in the picture of the braces, so 
I didn't really put those in, but she did have a very large overbite. Her front teeth pretty large, I noticed. Her hair was described as being medium length. She is of Colombian descent, and her nickname is, it says age here, but I'm, I'm going to go with Angel. I think they've just forgot to, it's a typo, they forgot the L. It says age, but I'm going to go with Angel here. Take an educated guess. And it's not like she was ugly or anything. Very attractive young lady. Clothing, jewelry, and description. She was last seen wearing a black trench coat and a pair of jeans. I have this in my notes that I thought this was a little strange. Now I'll explain this, why I think this is strange. We are talking in 1988. In 1988, I was in fourth grade. But, I do have the capability of remembering kids that were older than me, and most of the teenagers that I observed walking around did not wear trench coats. Some of them did, and they were more of like rock and roll and uh, new wave type people that were into music real good real heavily perhaps this girl was um, wearing this trench coat for fashion was it back back in these days I'm talking about uh, you wore stuff a lot for fashion when you were a teenager to try to fit into a click uh, for example if you were a skateboarder in a late 80s and early 90s you would wear real baggy pants and you would have a long belt that hung down and your, your what you call it your your jeans would be hanging off your butt basically and uh, but that was the that was the style and you were dressing to fit that style is it a possibility that she just liked trench coats? Is it a possibility it was raining uh, when she was... Yeah, that's all a possibility. But I'm just speculating that maybe it was more for fashion. And what does that have to do with anything, you ask? But maybe she was trying to fit in and she was kind of like an outcast... So that would lend itself to the poss the possibility of uh, them suspecting that she ran away because that was suspected early on that she ran away. This is all just me thinking out loud. I just thought it was odd. Uh, most of the kids that I've observed when I was a little third grader getting on and off the bus was uh, people in acid wash jeans and bright members only jackets and uh, Nike jackets you know the holes in the jeans the uh, the Tiffany look that she was a big she was like the Britney Spears of the late 80s Tiffany was everybody was trying to look and dress like her and uh, 
that was popular. I'm just suggesting maybe this girl was not popular and she was trying to fit in and maybe she did run away. So that's, that's why right. I thought it was weird. I just thought it was weird and just sharing that. Details of disappearance. Ariana was last seen in Ephrata, Pennsylvania on November 28, 1988. She was last seen at her residence located in the 20th block of North Charles Street. Her mother, Mariella Escobar, saw her at 6.15 a.m. in the kitchen. They spent some time together before her mother left for work and Adriana went back to bed school was off during the day of her disappearance so she was on her she was starting her Thanksgiving break and it's not abnormal for her to go back to sleep you know it was her day to just relax and chill so and there's there's nothing abnormal about that at all Adriana was discovered as missing when her stepfather came home from work that afternoon, he had left earlier in the morning than Escobar. He left earlier than Escobar, so he hadn't seen Adriana that day. He was confused to find that the curtains of the home still draped, since Adriana always opened them when she got out of bed. He wasn't immediately concerned and assumed Adriana had gone out to run an errand. That is a reasonable assumption. Especially since she's 15, she might have walked to the grocery store to get get some bread and milk and soda. Maybe she wanted some Doritos. You know, these were this is the stuff that you could do back in the 80s. You thought you were safe. When Escobar came home later they both became extremely concerned about where Adriana was she called family and relatives and found she was wasn't with anyone she even called Adriana's friends from school and found none of them to know of her whereabouts after searching to no avail her mother frantically called the police and reported Ariana Adriana missing at 9 33 p.m. Uh, and you're assuming there was time lost between the afternoon and 9.30 p.m. You would be assuming right, but they just thought that she was running errands for those first couple of hours. There. They didn't think anything of it. But, um... There was time lost in this missing persons investigation and that is critical not to lose time. They lost a lot of time in this scenario. Investigators originally believed that Adriana possibly ran away from her home. They interviewed her friends and family and found nothing to indicate Adriana had plans of leaving. She didn't take any of her personal belongings with her. She did, she did take her school bag with some clothing. She didn't take her school bag with clothing in it. She also left behind money in her bank account 
which was never touched. So that's odd if you're thinking that she ran away. You need money to run away, don't you? So that's another thing that doesn't make sense. Police believe she had left with a man who was apparently very close to her and knew her very well. However, investigators now believe other factors played a role in her disappearance. They believe someone she knew did in fact go to the apartment and picked her up. Her mother believed someone abducted her. Adriana has kept her... Has kept her... She, her mother believes she was abducted by someone... I kept Adriana from contacting her family and friends. So, what that means is Adriana mom, Adriana's mom has big time problems with the investigators. She is arguing the points that they think it was a relative or someone that's close to her. And Adriana's mom is saying, wait a minute here, this was she was abducted by a stranger, which would change her classification altogether, but uh, they don't know which side is right, but they're definitely not seeing eye to eye, Adriana's mom and the police. So perhaps Adriana's mom does not want to believe that it would be one of her uncle. Maybe they're, maybe the police are saying it was one of her uncles or aunts that did this. But I don't think it was aunts because they said it was. They said they believe she was abducted by a man, a male. So maybe they're accusing Adriana's mother's brother. Of doing this and she does not want to hear any of that and I don't blame her you're close with your brother or you don't want to hear that kind of stuff when you strongly think another way and she obviously does authorities believe that Adriana was probably murdered and have narrowed down a strong suspect in the case. The suspect has not been named publicly, but investigators have stated he no longer lives in the area. Escobar has denied that that, sus that suspected person was involved in her daughter's disappearance, probably because it's someone she loves, and has criticized this investigation into her daughter's disappearance. It seems like just, just the authorities are just confused about this case altogether. And it is confusing. If she was murdered, there's never been a body found all these years. And if she ran away, why didn't she take money? And if she was abducted by someone close to her, why is her mother arguing that that's not true? These are all mysteries, guys, that have yet to be solved. She was a beautiful young lady. There's no question about it. And her mother and her relatives deserve to know what happened to this girl
She alleged, Mariana's mother, I believe, alleged that after police narrowed down this suspect, they refused to investigate anyone else and other avenues and possibilities brought up in the case. There were several strange occurrences that occurred before and after Adriana went missing. According to her family, they received obscene phone calls in the months leading up to Adriana's disappearance and they abruptly stopped after November 28th, 1988, which is when she went missing. Apparently, just a week after Adriana went missing, Escobar found a piece of paper taped to the light post outside of the residence. The paper showed a drawing of a skeleton inside of a coffin and words which said, Special Delivery. Investigators have found no solid clues as to how Adriana went missing and no one has seen her since 1988. Now that's just creepy, isn't it? Weird occurrences before and after this girl disappears. They drew a picture of a skeleton inside of a coffin. That is just, that's very sick and twisted. Whoever drew it, I, I wonder if they could get handwriting analysts out there and figure who drew that. How that got there how that this is there any fingerprints on the paper you know I have a lot of questions in this case at the time of her disappearance Adriana was described as a considerate and well-behaved teenager who lit up the lives of everyone she met she was described as a fun and bright person at the time she disappeared. She was a ninth grade student at Our Lady of Perpetual Perpetual Hell, it says, but oh, that can't be right. Our Lady of Perpetual Catholic School in 1988. Adriana's disappearance remains unsolved and foul play is suspected. This is the investigating agency right here, guys. Ephrata Police Department, 717-738-9265. I still think if she was like a fun-loving kid, then she was in a clique then that uh, dressed different than other people. They were still kind of like outcasts. People that wore trench coats. People didn't wear it. What I'm trying to say, guys, is uh, maybe I'm beating down the wrong path, but people didn't just wear trench coats for no reason back in the 80s. There, there was a reason you wore a trench coat. It was, and it was usually because you liked a certain kind of music. But that is just my conjecture at the moment. Guys, this is what she looked like. And again, if you have any information, you need to contact the Ephrata Police Department. They're still investigating this case, and there's the number. 717-738-9265. Again, guys, that does it for this episode. Try to do something nice for a stranger today doesn't cost you anything. Peace out, true believers.